Trudeau also announced $500 million in support for Canada's arts, culture and sports sectors, which have been hit particularly hard by the pandemic. There are some glimmers of hope in Canada's fight against COVID-19. Dr. Theresa Tam says there are signs the virus is slowing in parts of the country, but that progress could easily be lost if Canadians stop physical distancing. New outbreaks can be sparked anywhere at any time. So remember, this is not a sprint. It is a marathon, and there will only be unpleasant surprises if we quit early. More than 1,300 people in Canada have died of COVID-19, and the number of confirmed cases has now surpassed 31,000. Ontario recorded its most new cases in a single day. 564 more people have tested positive. Quebec also reported a spike, 941 new confirmed cases. Alberta has 239 new ones, and B.C. has only 43 new cases. And if that trend continues, B.C. officials say they could start easing restrictions in mid-May. Eric Sorensen looks at what B.C. is getting right and how other provinces compare. It is, on balance, good news for B.C. The upward curve in the number of COVID-19 cases is flattening. And the requirement for ICUs and ventilators is well within BC's capacity to handle the outbreak so far. Modeled against other jurisdictions, the number of cases in northern Italy and in Hubei, China, BC, the purple line, is by comparison much lower day by day and not very different from the much admired outcome so far in South Korea. So we are on the right track, but we must hold that line. BC's data shows something striking about the age groups with the virus. The number of COVID-19 cases has mostly struck working age adults in their 30s to their 60s. But the number of deaths has taken a terrible toll on older people. In fact, the median age of people who've died is 86 in British Columbia. This again reflects the tragedy that has been um, the, the outbreaks that we've had in our long-term care homes here in British Columbia. And it reflects the rise in mortality among the elderly across the country. The regional disparity we saw in the wave of cases we're now seeing in the number of deaths. With the smaller provinces, the numbers remain very low. On the prairies, the east coast, the northern territories, barely 1% of the total deaths in the country. Now in the bigger provinces, BC and Alberta have seen a drop off in their numbers. It is a much bigger number in Ontario and a disturbingly high number in Quebec. And this represents 98% of all the deaths in Canada. But here is the trend. Over the last week, Ontario and Quebec together account for 94% of the deaths in the country. All the other provinces and territories, just 6%. And the sad fact is, Quebec has recorded almost 62% of all the deaths in Canada in the last week. The tragedy in Quebec has played out largely in long-term care facilities, and the province is struggling to get on top of it. We're going through a tough situation, but we're doing everything we can to take care of our elderly. A surge in COVID-19 deaths was expected this month. It is hitting harder in central Canada, but the advice to all of Canada is don't let up. Keep your distance. We have come through this together, but we're not out of it yet. We're still in the eye of that storm. Eric Sorensen, Global News, Toronto. A personal support worker at a Toronto long-term care home has died from COVID-19. 54-year-old Christine Mandagarian passed away Wednesday. She worked in health care for more than three decades, most recently at Siena Altamont Care Community. Her husband believes more should have been done to protect them and his wife. I'm not upset, I'm mad. After, after what my wife worked 31 years in that place, and that's how they treat my wife, she gave a life over there. She gave a life for the senior citizens over there. There are more than 40 confirmed cases of COVID-19 at the Toronto facility. At least eight residents have died from the virus. The federal government is sending reinforcements into Quebec to help long-term care homes hit by outbreaks. 125 military medical personnel will be deployed starting this weekend. At least 688 people in Quebec have died of COVID-19. More than half were in long-term care homes. In many cases, those facilities are understaffed and workers are poorly paid. Quebec's premier admitted today that staffing problems played a role in the crisis. He said in French that he should have acted faster. If I were to do it again, I would have increased the wages of orderlies more quickly. I take 
full responsibility for this. We came into this crisis badly equipped. And of course, the situation has deteriorated the deaths of Canadians at care homes are raising fears about how many seniors could contract COVID-19. Europe has seen a rapid surge in similar tragedies in these facilities. Only now are governments there changing how they deal with these vulnerable residents and staff. Here's Redmond Shannon. Three weeks ago, as Spain's death rate was rising rapidly, soldiers found dead bodies abandoned inside a Madrid nursing home. Staff had apparently been overwhelmed. The virus swept through Italian care homes just as quickly. Most countries had restricted or banned outside visitors, but in many cases, hospital patients were admitted into care homes without testing. The UK is now changing that in a similar move to provinces like Ontario. Today we can announce that everybody going from hospital into social care will be tested, will be isolated whilst the result of that test comes through. Staff and residents with symptoms will be tested too. It should help reduce infections, but it might also impact the UK's death numbers, which only includes those who died inside hospitals. I think it's been widely reported that there are growing numbers of deaths within care homes, and we're very anxious that we get those properly and accurately recorded so that we can ensure that we understand how to manage this pandemic. This week it emerged the UK death toll figure, including care homes, is at least 15% higher than government tallies. Belgium's very high national death rate could be down to it including suspected and untested cases of COVID-19 in care facilities. Like Canada, almost half of its deaths could be in seniors' homes, suggesting the UK and others could still be underestimating deaths. Italy only started testing in care homes last week. Britain, meanwhile, is putting in place protocols for families to visit dying relatives. Giving people's closest loved ones the chance to say goodbye. Helping, if nothing else, to make the most difficult moments a little easier. Redmond Shannon, Global News, London. A Global News special on the COVID-19 pandemic. Coronavirus, the new reality. Sundays at 7 on Global.